Once upon a time, in Azuka village, there existed a deep superstition that struck fear into the hearts of the villagers. The belief that the birth of twins brought nothing but misfortune and calamity upon the community. Generations had passed since the king and elders first decreed that any family blessed with the birth of twins would be cast out from the village, their names stricken from memory, and their faces erased from the collective consciousness of their neighbors. It was believed that twins were an omen of darkness. In this village lived a very humble and hard-working farmer named Obi, and his wife, Adaku. They have been married for 15 years, but had no kids. Every night they prayed for just one child. Please, Lord, let us have a baby, they cried out to God. Obi and Adaku didn't give up hope. They held on to each other tight and kept on praying. We'll have a baby one day, they said with determination. Everyone in the village was terrified of having twins because nobody wanted their children to be thrown into the evil forest. It was the scariest thing imaginable. Whenever a woman discovered she was pregnant, her heart would fill with dread. She and her husband would pray with all their might. Please, let it be just one baby, not two. Even Adaku and Obi, who had been longing for a child for 15 years, joined in these prayers. Deep down, though, they secretly yearned for twins, despite the village's terrifying tradition. Sometimes Obi would ponder out loud, what if we have twins? It wouldn't be bad. But then reality would come crashing down on him. But our tradition forbids it. And as Obi and Adaku walked to the farm each day, they felt the villagers' eyes on them. People pointed and whispered, calling Adaku barren and saying Obi might be impotent. It hurt them deeply, especially Adaku. She'd be mocked by some women wherever she went. But she never gave up hope, thanks to her husband's understanding. Obi stood by her side, his love unwavering, even when his family suggested he marry a new wife. No, he said firmly. I love my wife too much. God will answer us at the right time. A few months passed, and Adaku's prayers were answered. She found out she was pregnant. Their joy knew no bounds as they eagerly anticipated the arrival of their long-awaited child. Even the villagers, who had once mocked them for their barrenness, now shared in their happiness, offering congratulations and well wishes. Nine months later, Adaku went into labor, and with the help of a traditional old woman she gave birth to twins, two bouncing baby boys. But instead of the expected jubilation, Adaku's eyes filled with tears. Though it was supposed to be a moment of pure joy, the weight of the village's superstitions hung heavy in the air. Despite their mixed emotions, Adaku and Obi couldn't help but marvel at the beautiful babies God blessed them with. However, their joy was short-lived as news of the twins' birth spread like wildfire throughout the village. In no time, the king, alarmed by the birth of the twins, sent for Adaku and Obi, along with the newborn twins. The king ordered the guards to take the twins to the evil forest, but Adaku and Obi couldn't bear the thought. They stood in front of the guards, blocking their way, and pleaded with the king for mercy. We've waited so long for children, Adaku cried. Please. Have pity on us. But the king turned a deaf ear to their pleas. Determined to uphold the village's tradition, he refused to listen to their desperate cries. Faced with the unthinkable, Obi and Adaku made a brave decision. We would rather die than allow our children to be thrown into the evil forest, Obi declared, his voice trembling with emotion, seeing their unwavering resolve. Very well then, the king said reluctantly, his voice heavy with sorrow. You and your newborn twins will be sent to the forest. Though terrified of the unknown that awaited them, Obi and Adaku knew they couldn't let their children suffer alone. We'll go with them, Obi declared, his eyes shining with determination. Nobody has ever gone to the forest and come back alive, but we'll face it together. And so, with heavy hearts and trembling hands, Obi and Adaku were sent into the depths of the unknown. But even in the face of unimaginable danger, their love for their children burned brighter than ever before. As Adaku and Obi found themselves deep in the heart of the evil forest, a sudden appearance startled them. An old woman, looking weary and worn, emerged from the shadows. She tearfully begged them for food. Though they had brought only enough food for themselves, they couldn't ignore the desperation in her eyes as she begged for food to eat. Despite knowing it was their last meal, their hearts moved with compassion. 
They shared their food with the strange old woman. Grateful for their kindness, the old woman's eyes sparkled with gratitude. As they prepared to leave, she called out to them, her voice trembling with urgency. In a surprising turn of events, she handed them a small bundle of herbs, explaining that they had the power to restore the sight of a king that has been blind from birth. Before they could fully comprehend her words, she vanished into thin air, leaving them bewildered yet strangely hopeful. With the mysterious herbs in hand, Adaku and Obi felt a newfound sense of purpose. As they navigated their way out of the treacherous forest, guided by the old woman's words, they couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. But they pressed on, driven by the urgency of their mission. As Adaku and Obi stepped into the bustling village, the sight of their arrival caught the attention of a nearby villager. With wide eyes and a puzzled expression, the villagers approached them, curious about their unexpected presence. Sensing the need to explain, Adaku and Obi hurried to share the purpose of their journey to deliver a precious gift to the king, a remedy that could potentially restore his sight. When the villagers heard about Adaku and Obi's mission, they quickly whisked them away to the king's palace. After introducing themselves, they explained their purpose to the king. Though skeptical at first because he didn't believe he could ever see again, the king agreed to give it a try, just to see if it would work. Without much excitement, he accepted, and Obi gently applied the herbs to his eyes. When the king opened his eyes, he could see again, and the palace erupted into cheers and celebration. The king wasted no time and immediately called for the elders and villagers to join in the jubilation. Adaku and Obi were treated like royalty, and they enjoyed a grand feast with their beloved twins by their side. The next day, after the big celebration, the king asked them why they came to his village to help him. They told him the whole story, and the king was shocked and surprised that such a tradition still existed. Intrigued by their tale, he listened intently, eager to understand more about their journey and the challenges they faced along the way. As they recounted their adventures, the king's eyes widened with amazement, and he couldn't help but admire their bravery and determination. After Adaku and Obi finished narrating their incredible journey, the king was deeply moved. He declared that he would reward them for their extraordinary deeds. To Adaku and Obi's astonishment, the king made a grand gesture. He divided his kingdom into two equal parts and presented one part to Obi and his family. This meant that Obi would become the second ruler after the king. When they heard this astounding news, Obi and Adaku were overcome with a mix of shock and joy. Tears of gratitude flowed freely from their eyes as they embraced each other, hardly able to believe their good fortune. They were filled with immense gratitude for the king's benevolent heart and the incredible opportunity he had bestowed upon them. As the reality of their new status sank in, Obi and Adaku couldn't contain their excitement. They danced and rejoiced with the villagers, their hearts overflowing with happiness and gratitude. It was a moment they would never forget a testament to the power of kindness. Years later, the king of Azuka fell critically ill with blindness, the same king who had once sent Adaku, Obi, and their twins into the evil forest. Despite trying all the native doctor's remedies in the village, his sight remained elusive. Then, one day, a palm wine tapper from Obi's new village, where he now ruled as king, saw the king's plight. He offered a glimmer of hope claiming to know someone who could help restore the king's sight. Overjoyed at the prospect of regaining his vision, the king eagerly agreed to follow the palm wine tapper. The next day, they set out for Obi's village. Meanwhile, back in Azuka village, rumors swirled that Obi and his family had perished in the evil forest long ago. As they arrived in Obi's village, the king was led straight to Obi's palace. From afar, Obi spotted the familiar figure of the king who had once been cruel to them. With his twin boys, now grown, by his side, Obi approached the king. Why are you in my kingdom? Obi asked, unable to contain his curiosity. The king recounted his tale of woe, revealing his desperate quest for sight. With a determined hand, Obi pressed and squeezed the juice of the herbs into the king's eyes. In an instant, the king's eyes flew open, but he failed to recognize Obi and his family. Their appearance had changed drastically. 
they now exuded wealth and royal splendor. After a few moments of confusion, Obi introduced himself to the King of Azuka. In that moment of realization, the King of Azuka felt a wave of remorse wash over him. He was ashamed of his past actions and the pain he had inflicted on Adaku, Obi, and their newborn twins. With a heavy heart, he bowed his head in apology, seeking forgiveness for his past transgressions. Obi, displaying remarkable forgiveness, extended his mercy to the king of Azuka. He explained that the harmful tradition wasn't entirely the king's fault, as it had been ingrained in their society for generations. With determination, Obi insisted that the tradition must be able to share it immediately. Deeply moved by Obi's compassion, the king wholeheartedly agreed, recognizing the need for change. As the king arrives in his village, he wasted no time in sharing his astonishing experience with his people. The villagers listened in astonishment as he recounted his disbelief at finding Obi, his wife, and twins alive and well. They had all believed that they had perished in the evil forest, but God had spared them. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the king summoned all the elders and priests in the land. Together, they decided to abolish the long-standing tradition of branding twins as evil. The priests performed psalms rituals to appease the gods of the land, and the gods wholeheartedly accepted. As the news of the tradition's abolishment spread throughout the village, a wave of relief and jubilation swept over the villagers, no longer burdened by the fear of bearing twins. Mothers-to-be embraced the possibility of a double blessing with open hearts. It was a joyous occasion, igniting a newfound sense of hope and unity among the villagers as they looked forward to a future filled with acceptance and love. Hey everyone, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the like button, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Your support means the world to us and it helps us create more awesome content for you. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.